Hi, welcome to the new section of the course, Plugin Development. In this section, we will cover topics such as creating a plugin, creating an analyzer plugin, creating a REST plugin, creating a cluster action, creating an ingest plugin. So let's begin with the first video titled Creating a Plugin. In this video, we will see how to set up a working environment to develop native plugins. Native plugins allow several aspects of the Elasticsearch server to be extended, but they require a good knowledge of Java. The code to this video is available in the simple plugin directory, available in the code bundle. Generally, Elasticsearch plugins are developed in Java using the Maven build tool and applied as a zip file. To create a simple JAR plugin, we will perform these steps. Now to correctly build and serve a plugin, some files must be defined. Firstly, pom.xml is used to define the build configuration for Maven. The espluginproperties defines the namespace of the plugin class that must be loaded. Then we have the Java file, which is the main plugin class, which is loaded at startup and also initializes the actions plugin. We also have plugin.xml assemblies, which defines how to execute the assembly steps with Maven. It is used to build the zip file to deliver the plugin. So now a standard pom.xml file is used for creating a plugin containing the code. First one is the Maven pom.xml header. The parent pom.xml files is used to derive common properties or settings. Some properties are mainly used to simplify the dependencies. Then we have a huge list of jar dependencies. Then a list of Maven plugins required is to build and deploy the artifact. Now in the jar, there must be a plugin descriptor.properties file, which defines the entry point class that must be loaded during plugin initialization. This file must be embedded in the final jar. It is usually put in the source, main, resources directory of the Maven project. It's generally rendered with the data taken from the Maven properties. For example, the version and class name. Then we have simple plugin.java class is an example of the basic code that needs to be compiled for executing a plugin. Now we complete compiling and deploying the workflow. We need to define a plugin.xmn file used in the Maven assembly step. This file defines the resources that must be packaged into the final zip archive. Let's take a look at it. Several parts make up the development life cycle of a plugin, such as designing, coding, building, and deploying. To speed up the build and deployment steps, which are common to all plugins, we need to create a Maven pom.xml file. The pom.xml file is a standard for developing Elasticsearch plugins. This file is composed of several section entries used to set up the current Maven project. In detail, we have the name of the plugin that is Elasticsearch Simple Plugin. Then we have group ID and artifact ID used to define the plugin artifact name. Then we have the plugin version, then type of packaging, a project description with the starting year, an optional license section in which we can define the license for the plugin. For the standard Apache 1, the code should look like this highlighted part. Then we have a parent POM used to inherit common properties. Now the global variables set are typically in the properties section. The Elasticsearch version and other library versions are set. The properties are used to modularize the Maven strings. Here we can also define variables that will be resolved during Maven execution. A list of dependencies for compiling a plugin, the Elasticsearch jar, and the log4j library are required for the compile phase. The Maven plugin section contains a list of Maven plugins that execute several build steps. We have the compiler section, which requires a source compilation. The Java version is fixed at 1.8. Then we have the source section, which enables the creation of source packages that are to be released with the binary. These are useful for debugging. The assembly section, which builds a zip taking a configuration plugin.xml file and puts the output in the releases directory. Related to pom.xml, we have the plugin.xml file, which describes how to assemble the final zip file. This file is usually contained in the source, main, and assemblies directory of the project. The most important sections of this file are formats. Here the destination format is defined. Next is exclude sets in dependency set, which contains the artifacts to exclude from the package. Generally, we exclude the Elasticsearch jar as it's already provided in the server install. And finally, we have the include sets in dependency set. Contains the artifacts to include into the package. They are mainly the required jar files used to run the plugin. Now during plugin packaging, the include and exclude rules are verified and only files that are allowed to be distributed are put in the zip. After having configured Maven, 
we can start to write the main plugin class, which is the simple plugin.java class. Every plugin class must be derived from plugin1, and it must be public, otherwise it cannot be loaded dynamically from the jar. In this video, we configured a working environment to build, deploy, and test plugins. After that, we reused this environment to develop several plugin types.